Let's get right to it. The data engineering role changes depending on the technologies involved, but the core facets of the role are the same. So what does that mean? It means as a data engineer, you can work on Azure, AWS, or GCP, and use completely different tools to accomplish the same task. The key point to point out here is that you're going to need cloud skills as a data engineer. Now, can you be a data engineer on AWS and Azure? You can, and you might have to do both at some companies, but there's so much to learn that the thinner you spread yourself, the harder your job's going to be. If you want to be a data engineer, I highly recommend you focus on one cloud provider. The two top players are AWS and Azure. However, there's still a ton of work out there for data engineers on GCP. It's important to keep in mind this is the top role on Earth. A few years ago, a top guy at Google said, you need five data engineers for every machine learning engineer out there. So the amount of opportunities for data engineers now and over the next few decades is going to be staggering. Don't worry about saturation either. Most of these jobs aren't being filled right now. The company I'm working for right now has been looking for a data engineer for two months now. There are also roles that are cloud-based that involve still other roles within data engineering. For example, you could be a data engineer and only focus on a cloud data warehouse called Snowflake. Snowflake is a data warehouse that works on the big three cloud providers. That's yet another avenue that you could take as a data engineer. Right now, I'm working with just AWS and Snowflake. Now, if you're thinking, why would you want to learn Snowflake? Well, because Snowflake architects, the experts on Snowflake right now, are pulling down 300K salaries, and all they need to know is SQL, a cloud provider, and Snowflake. It's a pretty good incentive. All right, so what are the takeaways from the video? Firstly, there are tons of high-paying jobs out there for data engineers, and they will be into the future. It's one of the top roles on Earth, and it's basically future-proof. Secondly, you're going to need to choose a cloud platform and start learning the basics of that platform while focusing on the data services aspect of that platform. Thirdly, you're going to need certifications. Once you've chosen the platform, simply Google data engineering certifications for the provider you're interested in. Fourthly, don't forget about SQL. Now, when I say SQL, I don't mean authoring DML statements. You're going to need to know DML and DDL inside and out. What statement do you use to create a table in SQL? What about a database? The DDL for both of these is almost universal. What are data types? What's the difference between char and var car? You'll need to know about indexes and their structure. You'll need to know about query optimization. You hear this one a lot. My query's running slow. You're the data engineer. Now fix it. You're going to need to know how to fix it. You're going to need to know transactional storage versus data warehouse storage structures. For example, why does BigQuery and Snowflake use columnar storage for their data warehouse architecture? Final thoughts? Learn SQL and focus on one vendor's database to start with. SQL Server and MySQL are great starting points. Lastly, get a job as soon as you can in a lower tier role like that of a data analyst. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.